Veteran journalist Mark Levy has covered the Middle East for the past five decades and was an editor correspondent for the Associated Press in Cairo between 2009 and 2013. He's just published a book about his experiences, and I asked him what inspired its title, Broken Spring. The title Broken Spring is a result of a lot of disappointment among people who thought that they were going to do something new in the Arab world around 2011. First Tunisia fell, then Egypt, uh, then uh, uh, revolutions began in other countries, and people really thought this is it, the old order is going away, we're going to have a new order made up of democratically elected leaders who will listen to the people and reform everything, and, and we're going toward a new era of, of, of brightness and light, and it just didn't happen. It broke. It fell apart from its own weight, from its own disarray, from the inability of the revolutionaries themselves to then become politicians in the good sense, to then go canvass their neighborhoods and get support and persuade people that what they're doing is the right thing. And said, in, at least in Egypt, they were still marching up and down Tahrir Square every day, complaining about this and complaining about that, while the Muslim Brotherhood was out in the hustings uh, getting votes. That's just a microcosm of what happened all over the, all over the region. And that's why it all fell apart, and that's why it's broken spring. What was it like for you as an American-Israeli journalist living through this era in Cairo of great tumult? It was exciting, and for uh, an academic type like me, it was like going to grad school. I've been living in Israel for 40 years. Uh, I thought I knew the region. I've traveled around the region covering news stories all that time and you know, in and out covering this and that major event. I'd never lived in an Arab country before. I actually lived in an apartment building with Egyptians who spoke no English and I had to really practice my Arabic to make sure that I got the right rent receipt and that sort of thing and then could buy the vegetables and, th and to, to interact with my neighbors and to interact with the people of Cairo uh, and, and to learn who they are and what they are. Uh, it was fascinating. What you'll notice is missing is frightening. I wasn't frightened. I wasn't uh, ever threatened. I never felt I was in any danger. Uh, even after my landlord, who runs the building I lived in, discovered I'm a Jew, uh, I probably forgot to take that off once or something uh, and before I got out the door. Didn't matter. He also didn't know what a Jew was. He wished he'd marry Christmas once. Right? Uh, at my office, uh, dozens of Egyptians working at the Associated Press office, all of them knew all along that not only I'm, uh, am I an American, obviously I'm an Israeli, they learned that I'm an Orthodox Jew, it made no difference to them whatsoever. Hate of Israel is intrinsic in Egypt. They do hate Israel, but the kind of same way I hate broccoli. I'm going to be in trouble for that. How did your tenure in Cairo affect your view of the security of the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt? It became very clear to me that we were putting here in Israel, putting much too much emphasis on what people say. In other words, there's a lot of uh, conspiracy theory stuff going on. The shark appears off the coast. Oh, the Mossad sent it. Don't ask it. It just goes over on and on. And a couple of things happened while I was there as well. It really makes no difference whatsoever. Israel and Egypt have very deep common interests, most of them uh, military, some of them economic. We don't talk about them a lot. If I say QIZ, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's a very, very important economic agreement with Israel, Egypt, and the United States that is worth billions to Egypt, and no one's ever heard of it, and just as well. The interests will continue to maintain the peace treaty. I'm co totally convinced of it. No matter who's in power in Egypt, it'll continue to, to thrive, and it'll continue to be quiet and underground, and the criticism and the, uh, the outlandish statements will continue to be broadcast on Egyptian media, and we will probably continue to sit up in our chair and say, oh, heavens, what's going on over there? Nothing's going on. We'll be fine. In medical news.